Now, I'm sure uh, some of our audience uh, is wondering about the EGFR mutated subset that was included in the Empower 150 trial, where the data suggested that, um, especially for progression-free survival, there was a benefit there that hasn't been observed in any other immunotherapy trials, really. Um, so is this is, but this is giving four drugs, including bevacizumab. Now, I've been asked by others, you know, would you use this up front in a patient with an EGFR mutated lung cancer? I assume you agree the answer is no. In other words, we're going to use an EGFR TKI or maybe a series of TKIs. But if you came to the point where you're now at chemotherapy, would you consider, even though it's not first line, maybe giving this regimen because it includes bevacizumab as your immunotherapy uh, treatment of choice? I think it's a really important, important question. And uh, it was again discussed here at ESMO uh, today. The two subsets that are intriguing for the Empower 150, um, but they're subsets is uh, patients with mutation and patients with liver metastases, where uh, most trials have hedged or not uh, simply excluded patients, certainly where the mutations are concerned. But uh, with the addition of bevacizumab, you see single trial, Empower 150, uh, an advantage. So I agree with you that that would be the group of patients to, uh, to consider using the four drugs because the evidence seems to be there although it is subset analysis. Yeah, I, I think the thing that makes me feel a little better about um, those data are the fact that we know from multiple randomized studies now that um, adding bevacizumab to an EGFR TKI such as erlotinib improves disease-free survival compared to erlotinib alone. So there seems to be something there. Now that doesn't mean that that regimen has necessarily translated into a standard of care uh, of course, we have new TKIs now like osmeritinib. But still, it shows that maybe there's some, something about antiangiogenesis in EGFR mutated lung cancer. So having a regimen with immunotherapy that also includes bevacizumab could be um, a potential for that subset of patients. So, so, David, let me ask you then a little bit more about the liver metastases uh, issue, which also came up this morning. It seems to be a group of patients with a particularly poor prognosis, and uh, that frequently also in the immune oncology trials have not fared as well uh, as others. They still might derive benefit, but less significant. Uh, is that another group where you would consider this? I, I don't know what to make of the liver metastasis data. Uh, although it was quite clear that there was um, additional benefit uh, for the four-drug regimen in the Empower 150 trial in patients with liver metastasis. In the subsequent trials, including the two that were presented today, the other Empower studies, that didn't prove true. Now, the difference was bevacizumab. So it makes me wonder, um, is there something about uh, the immune microenvironment in the liver which in general is bad for immunotherapy and plus chemotherapy, but with bevacizumab, maybe you alter that. Uh, I, this is just hypothetical, yeah. Yeah. but um, I, otherwise it's hard to know whether the Empower 150 is just a one-shot observation or whether it's actually telling us something about the biology of cancers and how we might approach them. Yeah, I agree. To me, it looks like intriguing data that uh, for a group of patients with a poor prognosis, one, one might consider. I don't think it's compelling enough at this point to say it's the standard. Um, unlike EGFR, where I think um, since you have opposite evidence from when bevacizumab is not part of the regimen, that patients don't necessarily benefit from the addition of an immune oncology agent. Um, so there, I think, uh, erring on the side of adding bevacizumab. Um, for liver, I think it's uh, uh, probably a good idea to look at additional data from other trials. 
We have one exception that I, I have to mention as an alliance investigator of uh, this trial that we did that's very similar to the um, Japanese trial of adding bevacizumab to erlotinib in patients with an EGFR mutation. And of course, we accrued much less fast. Tom Stinchcomb presented that at this meeting here as a poster. Um, and we could not, but it's a much smaller trial, reproduce this uh, oh, Japanese really? observation. Interesting. So the curves, uh, you know, cut uh, one uh -huh. into the other. Um, I think it needs more analysis because of second line therapy, you know, the emergence of osimertinib. Right, right. Um, so uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure that the original Japanese observation is not the correct one. Um, but uh, this is certainly a fly in the ointment.